and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about staying focused on the focal point. I even had this sign up on my studio to remind me, stay focused and put a focal point in the painting. As you can see, some of these paintings that I'm working on, there's definitely one focal point. You don't want to have two focal points, you get cross-eyed. One focal point. This could be one, but it really is over here because of the color. So not only is it placement for the focal point, goof-proof focal point, but it's also the color. We'll help the viewer go right to it. The focal point doesn't have to be the biggest thing. Here's an example of focal point being so small so small that it gets attention. This is recognizable. Here in abstract painting, you do the same thing with color. So obviously your, your eye's gonna go here, not over here, not over here. You don't wanna put the focal point on the edge because it'll draw the eye right off the painting. So it should be somewhere in here and where do you put it? Even in a big abstract like this, there's obviously a focal point, bam, because of the contrast. Alrighty, so it's important that you place the focal point in a place that invites the viewer into the painting, not out of the painting, all right? So you should have a focal point. I always start off when I always get confused if I look at a painting and I see no place for my eye to rest or to go to. So. Remember painters, stay focused on the focal point and let me show you how I find my focal point. So whether you're doing an abstract or something more recognizable, everyday subjects, I still start off with the focal point. Here's my table, I paint flat. I do have a color wheel. I call it my goof-proof color wheel because it starts off with a focal point. It says so right there on my wheel, focal point. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty helpful. My paper will be Fabriano paper or Kilimanjaro paper. It's watercolor paper. It has not been gessoed, for those of you who ask me all the time. Here are my Holbein paints. These are acrylic paints. I like them very much because it's so full of pigment and color. And that's what I'm going for, the color. I don't buy less expensive, you know, kind of toy colors. Uh, they don't have that much pigment in them. So, I have big, big wide brushes. Let me show you how I get started. The first thing I do is put some of this hand salve on my hands. I don't wear gloves. I put holes in those gloves. So I put this hand salve, any kind will work. It makes it easier for me to clean my hands at the end of the day. That's the only reason I do it. All right, the paper I have here happens to be Kilimanjaro watercolor paper. I get that at Cheap Joe's catalog. All right, this is a nine by 11. Big buckets of water over here off to the side. Big brushes, not tiny little brushes. And I have my tape. This tape, goes on the back of the painting, like that. So that way it doesn't go sliding around on my table, see? And I can paint with both hands. I also, as you have been following me in all those bob blasts, I use paper towels an awful lot. So I keep paper towels over here, and here we go. Wet my brush, I'm gonna go right for the focal point. But where do I put the focal point? That's the question. Well, I go to my chart. I have a chart. And one of the compositions on that chart is the classic one third, one third. This way you divide the paper one third, one third, and I just eyeball it. There's your grid for the golden section. Now, any one of those spots, whether it's here or here or here or here, 
will be aesthetically pleasing. I'm not making that up. Okay, it's aesthetically pleasing. But I have four focal points. One and only one should be the focal point. You see, now you don't even see the other ones. So that's kind of a design preference for me, is the golden section. Again, it can be either here or here. You decide, or here, or here, but choose one. You don't want to have two focal points. You see? So let me get rid of that a little bit. There we go. So I just wanted to show you the focal point. We're going to come back to that in a minute or two. I'm going to start off with an abstract. Again, just so you know where I'm going here. Very lightly, very light, there we go. Now, now I'm all set. Now according to my goof proof color wheel, the focal point happens to be yellow. Yellow, yeah. I'm gonna put it right here. Did you see how the paper moved around? It's because I didn't put any tape on the back side. I like my paper to stay put. There's the tape on the back side. Now it's gonna stay put. All right, let's get back to business here. This will definitely be an abstract, but I wanna show you the how the color wheel works for me. Now, according to the focal point, there's a little bit of orange in there. All right, put a little bit of marigold in here. There we go. Well, it looks like it's almost glowing. All right, and so we have the yellow, orange, maybe even a little bit of red. Is actually opera. It's glowing already. It's glowing already. Using the same brush. Let's get some colors out there. Now, the purple blue color is the dominant color. Put that in right now. A little bit of white, mix it all up. This is the titanium white, and I'm going to put it, this is pretty obvious what I'm doing here. You can't miss this focal point. <laughs> All right. There we go. And we'll make it darker down in here. Ooh. I'm playing with contrast right now. Remember how I said you can really draw attention to the focal point? with contrast, and that's really what I'm doing right here. I mean, you can't get any more contrasty than that. All right, nice and rich. Come in with maybe some magenta over here. Still dark, still blue-ish. Ish, ish is the big word here. <laughs> but it's a variation of blue. Look how much fun I'm having with this. So it's pretty abstract. I mean, I can get in there and start scraping and scratching. I like drawing back into the painting a lot with this. So that's pretty defined hard edges. I'm softening some of the edges right now. But this is just the very, very beginning of an abstract, but it's pretty obvious, the focal point. If you see where the cruciform, I mean, the uh, tic-tac-toe is, you see? Your eye still goes to one spot, one spot, one spot. So that's the lesson for where to find the focal point in an abstract. Yeah, I do believe a even in an abstract, you just have a focal point, whether it's the shape that draws attention to itself or the color, like I just showed you right now. What about something that's more recognizable, like a vase of flowers? We'll do a quick little study on that, but I'll show you where to put the focal point. So in doing like a vase of flowers, I start off with one focal point, the queen, the most important flower. We're gonna use uh, this uh, 
purple pink color here, this opera color, and it says focal point. Okay, I'm going to start off with that focal point. Here's an example of what I'm still working on, kind of a neutral background, but look where the focal point is. It's not all over the place, and there's only one. There are many other flowers in here, but your eye still goes here to the focal point. Now, according to my color wheel, there's more green around that. So I need to add more green, more blue. You can see at least I get started that way. The background color happens to be more of a neutral tone, which is made up of all of these other colors. I mix up a big pot of all these other four colors that I'm going to be using in this painting and add lots of white to it until I get this gray-ish color, neutral color of all of these put together and that's why it holds together because this color is made up from all the other colors. It's just one way of how I like to make my neutrals. All right, let's use a piece of paper and start off with the design. So uh, again, I'll just do this quickly to remind you all where all this is going to be going. So right in here, looks like a good spot for a focal point. And all the other colors. There's your table. Maybe add a little bit yellow, some dark blue in here. Keeping this real simple, really simple. <laughs> Now let's do the background. In this particular case, it's the background. Here we go. I don't normally do it in this order. This is a quick way of showing you how this works. So of course I don't keep those lines, those tic-tac-toe lines in the painting. And let's get back into here. And let's put some white tablecloth down in here. It's the world's quickest <laughs> painting demo. Here we go. And inside, of course, you're going to see the table inside here a little bit. Come back over here. Paint all over the place. And maybe a shadow going off over here. There we go. Oh, I, that's right. I just realized I was painting it so I could see it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't normally paint upside down. <laughs> so here we have. A really simple composition, the golden section, golden section, you see, but look where your eye goes. So that's a brief beginning of how I even start a painting, but make sure you always focus on the focal point and please stay focused when you're in the studio. Don't be multitasking, no phones, no computers, just your sound system and lock the doors. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Thanks for watching.